Daily Words of God When the angels play music in praise of me, this cannot but stir up my sympathy for man. My heart is instantly filled with sadness, and it is impossible to rid myself of this painful emotion. In the joys and sorrows of being sundered from, and then reunited with man, we are unable to exchange sentiments. Separated in heaven above and on earth below, rare are the times that man and I can meet. Who can break free from nostalgia for former feelings? Who can stop reminiscing about the past? Who would not hope for the continuance of the sentiments of the past? Who would not pine for my return? Who would not long for my reunion with man? My heart is deeply troubled, and man's spirit is deeply worried. Though alike in spirit, we cannot often be together, and we cannot often see each other. Thus, the life of all mankind is fraught with grief and lacking in vitality, for man has always yearned for me. It is as if human beings were objects knocked down out of heaven. They cry out my name upon the earth, lifting up their gaze to me from the ground. But how can they escape the jaws of the ravening wolf? How can they free themselves from its threats and its temptations? How can human beings not sacrifice themselves because of obedience to the arrangement of my plan? When they loudly entreat, I turn my face away from them. I cannot bear to look on any longer. But how could I not hear their tearful cries? I will correct the injustices of the human world. I will do my work with my own hands throughout the world, forbidding Satan from harming my people again, forbidding the enemies from doing whatever they please again. I will become king on earth and move my throne there, making all my enemies fall to the ground and confess their crimes before me. In my sadness, anger is commingled. I will trample the whole universe flat, sparing no one, and striking terror into the hearts of my enemies. I will reduce the whole earth to ruins, and make my enemies fall into the ruins, that henceforth, they may corrupt mankind no more. My plan is already fixed, and no one, no matter who they are, must change it. As I roam in majestic pomp above the universe, all humanity will be made new, and everything will be revived. Man will no longer weep, no longer cry out to me for help then my heart will rejoice, and the people will return in celebration to me. The whole universe, from top to bottom, will royal in jubilation. Today, among the nations of the world, I am doing the work that I have set out to accomplish. I move about in the midst of humankind doing all the work within my plan, and all humanity is breaking up the sundry nations according to my will. The people on the earth have their attention fixed on their own destination, for the day is indeed drawing closer, and the angels are sounding their trumpets. There will be no more delays, and all creation will thereupon begin to dance in jubilation. Who can extend my day at their will? An earthling? Or the stars in the sky? Or the angels? 
When I make an utterance to initiate the salvation of Israel's people, my day presses in upon all of mankind. Every man fears the return of Israel. When Israel returns, that will be my day of glory. And so, too, will it be the day when everything changes and becomes renewed. As righteous judgment imminently approaches the whole universe, all men grow timid and fearful, because in the human world, righteousness is unheard of. When the Son of Righteousness appears, the East will be illuminated, and then it will in turn illuminate the whole universe, reaching everyone. If man can really carry out my righteousness, what would there be to fear? My people all await the arrival of my day. They all long for the coming of my day. They wait for me to bring retribution upon all mankind and to arrange mankind's destination in my role as the Son of Righteousness. My kingdom is coming into shape above the whole universe, and my throne holds sway in the hearts of hundreds of millions of people. With the angel's assistance, my great accomplishment will soon be brought to fruition. All my sons and my people eagerly await my return, longing for me to reunite with them, never to be separated again. How could the multitudinous populace of my kingdom not race toward one another in joyful celebration because of my being together with them? Can this be a reunion for which no price need be paid? I am honorable in all men's eyes. I am proclaimed in the words of all. When I return, moreover, I shall conquer all enemy forces. The time has come. I will put my work in motion. I will reign as king among men. I am on the point of return, and I am about to depart. This is what everyone is hoping for. It is what they wish. I shall let the whole of humanity behold the arrival of my day, and they shall all welcome the coming of my day with joy.